Our first guest today is Jutta uh, Mäkinen uh, from the University of Turku. She is a sustainable, sustainable development specialist from the Partnerships and Strategic, strategic Engagement Unit at the University of Turku. So Jutta, uh, please um, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to um, speak about the work that the University of Turku is doing. Just one second, I'll open my... You should be seeing my presentation. Is it... Are you, you, do you see it in a presentation yes. mode at the moment or...? In normal mode. Normal mode, let's see. Let's see, I'll see if I can, if it'd be better to, yeah, I'll just share my other screen. Now you see it in a presentation mode, right? Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. So yes, just as um, uh, Anina presented, my name is um, Jutta Mäkinen, Sustainable Development Specialist from the University of Turku. I work in the uh, University Administration in a unit called um, partnerships and strategic engagement, and I will be speaking uh, about the work that is being done at the University of Turku towards carbon neutrality and also how we aim to increase sustainability also in our campus life. So a bit about our foot and also our handprint. Um, so uh, just a few words before diving deeper into our carbon footprint. Um, the University of Turku in its new strategy is uh, very much um, uh, committed to sustainability. Sustainable development is an overarching topic and um, cross-cutting theme in our strategy. And our objective is to integrate sustainability in our operational culture and see that sustainability uh, and, sustain and the principles of sustainable development are realized in all our operations, so in our education, research and interactions with our different stakeholders and society, but also embedded in our everyday activities. And as Anina presented, uh, some of us have ambitious carbon neutrality goals and the University of Turku is actually committed to uh, aim for carbon neutrality by the end of 2025. And I will walk you through a little bit uh, what has been um, what has been done to achieve this goal and and how it all got started. Um, so um, also already before our new strategy, the University of Turku, or actually our university board, decided in December 2018 that the University of Turku will aim to be carbon neutral by the end of the year 2025. And, um, and this means uh, developing, um, uh, assessing what are our emissions and then developing new kinds of mode of, of operation at a university to ensure carbon neutrality. Also, um, uh, so what was done uh, after this decision of the university board, the steering group for sustainable development that has um, been um, steering the activities for sustainability at the University of Turku already since 2018, set a multi-professional project group to estimate the carbon footprint. And when this um, work started, we were actually among the first universities in Finland to, to assess their, their carbon footprint. There were really no set ways of doing it. And I know still today, there are many different ways of calculating, estimating the carbon footprint. Um, but what we did is that um, we set a project group to estimate and, and to find what are the most significant sources of greenhouse gas emissions uh, that, that we as the University um, of Turku produce. And um, this has been led by um, the vice rector for research, Professor Kalleanti Suominen, and it has had representatives from our central services, such as travel services, property facility management, procurements, but also from, from our academic community. Um, so the working group uh, started their work in August 2019. And uh, then in January 2020, 
we had the first estimation of our carbon footprint where we had we were identified the magnitude and the most significant sources and this was done from the data from 2018 so this is when we had our first carbon footprint finalized and um, in the same year in may we um, finalized the estimation also for for 2019 and uh, during this work we um, also, uh, when the work first started, we included uh, many categories in our estimations, but in um, already May 2020, we revisited and revised the categories that we include, include in our calculations and estimations. And then already March 2021, the work continued. So we have now a set uh, or we have a set of categories that we include in our calculations and the calculations um, take place every year. So in March, 2025, we had the estimation ready for our carbon footprint in 2020. And now in October, 2022, we um, have the estimation for our carbon footprint for 2021. But at the same time, we are all also um, always updating the way we calculate our carbon footprint. So we have had some updates in the emission factors we use in, in some categories. And at the same time, since uh, our carbon neutrality goal is uh, around the corner, so we have drafted a roadmap for 2025, uh, which includes um, the different ways in which we try to reduce the, the carbon footprint that, um, that we, we have. Um, so what do we include in our calculations? So we include um, direct emissions and also indirect emissions. Um, here is the division from um, uh, greenhouse gas protocol in, in SCOS, but here in the next slide, I can actually show you a little bit more what these categories look like that are included in, in our carbon foot calculations. And here you can actually see which represent the biggest uh, categories of emissions for us. So um, uh, as you can see from here, research uh, constitutes the biggest share of our emissions according to our uh, estimations. So here you can see research devices and, and laboratories are the ones that in our estimations uh, produce the biggest, biggest carbon footprint. But then we have, of course, big categories such as properties and business travel. However, during the years that we have been estimating our carbon footprint, these have significantly reduced. Uh, one of the reasons um, behind, for example, the reduction of, of the carbon footprint of the properties is because the property owner, uh, Finnish University Foundation has started uh, to compensate their own emissions and, and the University of Turku is um, is a tenant in, in most of its facilities, is tenant from, from this Finnish University Foundation, but we still do have some other, other properties that uh, uh, constitute this 14% of our, our emissions. And um, of course, during, during these years of the pandemic, we have seen a significant reduction in business travel. Now it represents 14% of our, of our total emissions for 2021, but it is actually compared to pre-pandemic, so to the first estimations, it is actually one-tenth the carbon footprint of business, business travel in, in, in our estimations. And, and it, of course, um, we know that uh, when travel restrictions are no longer in place, of course, people will start to travel more. So we will expect that this, this will uh, in our future estimations, this the share of business travel will, will increase. Um, but we also uh, look at our procurement, logistics, waste, and cleaning as part of our as part of the um, categories that we include in our carbon footprint. But as said in the first calculations, we did also include commuting and and uh, and um, mm, and the meals. Um, that are consumed during, during our work and, and study days at campuses, but, but no longer those are in, in these categories that we estimate, but we uh, do work 
um, towards reducing the carbon footprint that also commuting causes. Uh, and also we try to encourage our, our university community to take um, uh, into account when, for example, eating on campus, the, the carbon footprint of, of their, their lunches. Um, but how are we going forward? Um, towards 2025, as said, we have a roadmap including uh, different measures that we are still going to take in order to reduce our carbon footprint. Um, and for example, our botanic garden of the university just recently uh, switched from oil heating to wood chip heating plant. Uh, but we do, we do have um, um, different measures that we still hope that will, will affect, for example, that the, the amount of, of carbon footprint that is caused by our business travel will not be on the same levels that it was pre-pandemic. But of course, we have also active collaboration nationally with other institutes of higher education and, and other regional, regional actors and, and um, how, to, how to together um, concrete plan concrete action towards, towards carbon neutrality and, and how to um, estimate our carbon footprint so that so that we are doing it uh, more or less in the same direction but um, apart from this carbon footprinting that we are doing so reducing our footprint we are also uh, increasing our handprint on our campuses and this is done uh, through our vision for sustainable campus life so it is also this is also stemming from our strategy, as does the uh, goal for carbon neutrality. Um, we um, have a working group for sustainable campus life that was also set in in 2020 by our steering group, with the goal of uh, coordinating and implementing everyday sustainable solutions. And what this working group has done is that it has um, um, produced. Um, a sustainable campus life action plan uh, with the goal that also um, same year that we're going to be carbon neutral in 2025. Yeah, I'm sorry, our our um, um, uh, campus life is also um, following the principles of, of sustainable development. And uh, just what do we refer by campus life, if of course we refer both to the activities of the university as an organization, but also the activities of our university community members on all of our campuses and facilities and the areas managed by the universities. Oh, but that, by our university, sorry. And, and in addition to this, uh, this extends to the travel from and to campus and also where applicable also to distance learning and distance work. And here we see a, a, a really a good possibility to increase our handprint because we are a community of 25,000 students and employees. And, and when we um, actively promote sustainability and sustainable choices in our everyday life, we see that this has, we have a um, positive impact on also on the life outside of our, our campus. Um, and this action plan examines our everyday life, um, mainly, particularly in terms of ecological and economic sustainability. Uh, this plan was just now launched uh, last May, and it will be implemented to, through a separate action program that will be now taking place from 2022 until 2025, when we are hoping that, that um, we have sustainability embedded in all of our actions and and we are of course implement and 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 monitor the implementation and progress and report on it and and what is really important for us is that we co-create and and find and develop new ways of integrating sustainability thinking in our everyday life together with our community so we have um the work that has been done to um to compile this action plan was based on, on, on a survey that was done where we, we 
had the voices from within our university community and ideas and, and, and activities that we could implement taken into account. And we have uh, now opened also a digital platform where, to, uh, where we are having an active dialogue together with our community on the different ways of, of, of um, advancing sustainability in, in our everyday life. And what this um, sustainable campus life really is about, we have six different uh, main focus areas. So you can see that um, we, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really big plan. It has a lot of, uh, and of course, what these six focus areas do overlap a lot, but, but, um, it, but this is how we um, sort of um, divided it into these categories and they, we are um, implementing uh, actions in, in all of these. So one of the biggest um, categories, and I think one of the good ways of having a positive impact is having sustainability really embedded in our procurements and, and involving also life cycle assessment in our, in our procurements. And of course, sustainable solutions in our facilities. This also um, includes all our campus areas. And for example, biodiversity is a very, very, um, important topic in, in, in the development of, of our com campus areas and, and work travel. This, is, this uh, sustainability campus action plan also uh, connects very closely to our um, uh, carbon footprint calculations and estimations as well, since this also um, represents recommendations or gives recommendations, introduces new recommendations on how we will uh, travel for work in the future, so how we will be able to to um, um, <clears throat> not to not to reach the same levels as, as we did uh, for for uh, before the pandemic. But of course, overall campus mobility, we want to facilitate possibilities to to come to work, to come to study in uh, sustainably. So we are, for example, uh, uh, investing in in um, um, in making making possible that uh, that you can actually come by bike to to work and uh, etc. But of course, we also work very closely together with our um, campus um, restaurants so that uh, our staff and students have the possibilities of eating sustainably. And we also um, take a lot of. Uh, uh, try to put emphasis on also on, for example, um, not just uh, offering sustainable uh, meal options, but also raising awareness on on food waste. So when, for example, when then this sustainable campus life action plan was first launched, we uh, organized also a campaign to decrease food waste in the campus restaurants. And of course, we wish to uh, also support locally produced foods and, 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 and make sure that the event organization that, uh, that we have is also taking, taking these sustainable, sustainable principles in, in consideration. Uh, circular economy is one of the, the main focus areas. In pro um, uh, this is also a very, very big, big category that includes, for example, uh, aspects in product materials and, and different waste management uh, possibilities that we have we have at the at the campus, and then of course sustainability is uh, at the same time um, advanced also in our internal and and external services as well. Let me see if I have no. That was actually my last slide. I'm I'm trying to look at the at the time that if I did already. Uh, exceed my 15 minutes that I had reserved for this, but uh, this was mm, just a, a short overview of, of what the University of Turku is doing, both trying to actively reduce our carbon footprint before reaching the goal of becoming carbon neutral at the end of 2025, but at the same time, not just focusing on carbon footprint, but really wanting to focus on the positive handprint that we can have within, in our, within our community and also outside. So taking um, a lot of actions to, to ensure that uh, sustainability is integrated in, in every, everything we do. Thank you.